If you are a packaging hoe, you are gonna love this lipstick. I've never used anything like it in my life. Hey you guys, welcome back to my channel. If you're new here, my name is Jessica and I created Dolled Up by Jay. So in today's video, I wanted to do my top, top, top beauty favorites, makeup that I love that makes me feel confident and I wanted to share with you. I know I have filmed a few little get ready with me's and beauty hauls, but what I wanted to share were products that I have been using that I just absolutely love. Some of these I've been using for years. Some of them are a little bit newer, but have gotten to my top shelf status. And I just wanted to share because if you're new, like me you like seeing what products people use especially if you like their makeup I know sometimes you know I don't have the best makeup days I look at a video and I'm like oh god am I gonna post this yes I am but you know I feel like the makeup is looking good today I just wanted to share my beauty favorites that I honestly love so we're gonna have all categories face eyes lips etc if you're here for it give the video a thumbs up and let's get to it okay so let's start with face so I have a foundation that I really love this is the Dior forever natural nude I used to swear by the your air flash and apparently they discontinued it which is extremely sad it was such a beautiful airbrush natural foundation although a little bit expensive then I went to do the Dior Forever Skin Glow and it was getting too dewy on me for Dubai, although I do like mixing it. I've mixed it today with the Natural Nude. This is 3W and then I used the 2W0, mix it together, kind of make my perfect shade. This is not as dewy as the Skin Glow, but it is not matte. So if you are oily, this might be still a little too luminous on you. I don't personally like matte foundations because I have dry skin. I find it highlights dry areas of the face, but I really, really am loving this, although for hot weather or days when I want a no makeup makeup look, something just really easy to blend in, something that I don't want to use a lot of effort in, I have a new product. I'm so excited about this. A friend of mine told me about this. We were browsing the Bloomingdale's beauty section in Dubai Mall and she told me that a friend of hers swears by this and the sales lady was like, this is a bestseller. So we were in the Chanel section. This is the Chanel Le Beige Eau de Tint Water Fresh Tint. This is a really cool product. I've never used anything like it in my life. It is literally like a water-based foundation and if you see like the little basically has like little pigment beads inside of it and it's suspended in like a watery gel it is so nice I'll try and put some of it on my hands so you can see basically it just looks like this clear kind of just looks like this clear makeup product and like it's totally watery it is a little bit almost runny but then when you blend it in it just gives this gorgeous kind of sheen all over the skin. And it does come with a small little brush. The brush is almost a little too small, but it is a free brush. It's kind of like a little dome brush. I don't have it right now, sorry, it's in the bathroom. But this just gives a really nice kind of glow to the skin. Do we see the difference? Like it does give a nice little tint. And what I like to do is I like to do two pumps all over the face and then I do one more pump and then I blend with a little brush just to kind of really even it out and I find it just gives like a gorgeous gorgeous glow it's also very refreshing it's very cooling on the skin now as with Chanel Beauty it does have some fragrance but it's actually not overwhelming and it just looks really nice like it's just a really nice sheen this is with nothing and this is with just one coat. So I think it's just really gorgeous I really like this I have filmed a couple of videos wearing this with concealer in key areas as well and it's just really gorgeous now i have done the heat test with this because dubai is getting very hot it is now 36 degrees every day and so i do find no matter what i still sweat my face still sweats but the makeup does not look splotchy and horrible like i can still dab my face use like a little napkin blot whatever and i don't find that it's coming off in patches and looking crazy that's the one issue i have when you're wearing a more full coverage foundation is when you're really sweating and you kind of start wiping areas chunks can start to kind of separate in the heat and everything so if you're someone that lives in a hot climate and you want like a sheer glow of color and you're finding sometimes that even a bb cream or a tinted moisturizer is too much pigment you might really really like this it just feels like nice water on the skin like it's cooling it's refreshing it's really nice a subtle glow as well i find personally i like the nars pure radiant tinted moisturizer but i don't necessarily want that much coverage and the laura mercier tinted moisturizer as well 
I found just broke up on my skin and really looked patchy and horrible. And then the uh, IT Cosmetics CC Cream is too pigmented. So this honestly is super, super sheer. Literally, if you're someone that doesn't feel that confident in their skin though, it's gonna be too sheer for you. But for someone like me that just wants a quick little wash over the face that I can make more full coverage with a second coat and concealer on top, I really love it. So sorry that was a little bit of a long explanation, but I'm just really excited about this and I love it so much, you guys. The next product, really, really quick, I've mentioned this in so many tutorials and looks, this is the Dior Forever Skin Correct Concealer. I'm wearing it today. This is absolutely fabulous. It is very full coverage. It is very creamy. It doesn't make my under eyes look crepey and creasy. You do have to set it though, of course, but it's really nice. I buy shade 2W0 because my skin is more kind of like warm toned. I'm not really like too pink toned. So I just really, really love this. I've been using it for a couple years now and I'm obsessed. Okay, so now that we have our complexion products on, how do we set the face? So we set the face with the Givenchy Prisme Libra Powder. This is a repurchase. Honestly, I was starting to think, uh, maybe it's not that good. Maybe I should just switch to something else. So I got the Rare Beauty Radiant Setting Powder from Selena Gomez. I thought that powder looked beautiful in the recent Get Ready With Me um, trying new products video I did, but the one thing about it is it creased really easily on the eyelids. I had to reapply it twice and I had to reapply it under the eyes. And I notice when I go out in the day, it starts to look really, really powdery and like thick. Like it makes me look older under the eyes, this powder. So I don't think that that powder is great for the eye area. I think for the face, it looks absolutely fabulous. It looks radiant, it looks beautiful. There aren't really any glitter particulates. It just has this like sheen to it. It is gorgeous. But for setting eyes, if you're someone like me that has creasy under eyes and your eyelids are susceptible to becoming oily, that powder is not gonna work for you. So I know now it's more for all over the face, but a do-it-all powder is the Givenchy Prisma Libra. Now with this powder, I have the shade two, Satin Blanc. So it's a little bit messy right now. So it has this kind of yellow tinge, it has a purple shade, it has this kind of baby pink, and then it has another babyish pink. So that's just the one that really works for me. That's the one that was recommended to me twice by Shivanshi, so I just kind of kept repurchasing it. It can be a little bit messy because it is a loose powder as well, but, and then eventually the colors kind of like all meld as it gets low, but honestly, from going from the Rare Beauty powder to the Givenchy with the eye area, it is literally flawless. It is just silky smooth. My makeup doesn't really crease. I mean, it always creases a tiny bit, to be honest with you, but it's really just flawless. I've used it all over the face today. I've used it all down the neck, and it's just a really beautiful powder. It's very silky smooth. It doesn't feel heavy. It doesn't make your makeup look cakey, and that's the one thing with powders. I didn't use to powder my whole face because I didn't want it to look cakey and gross, and this is just not that. This is worth the money for sure. I do get 0.42 ounces of product just to give you reference and it did last me I would say about three or four months so you know it is a little bit more expensive than everyone's favorite Laura Mercier translucent setting powder but I found that just to be too heavy on my skin personally because I have dry skin. So yeah, highly recommend. Hey, now that we've set our concealer and done our foundation, we need to bronze. So I have two bronzers. One is luxury, one is drugstore. So first let's start with the luxury. This is the Dolce & Gabbana Solar Glow Bronzer. This is such a beautiful compact. This is the shade 50 Amber. So this is definitely a tan shade for me. I could wear it right now because I have gotten a little bit of sun and I've self tanned, but when I'm not tan, it's too dark. This blends like a dream. It is so, so, so beautiful. It is so warm. You cannot make mistakes with this. It is a beautiful, fabulous product. And the compact is just absolutely stunning. A little bit expensive, but it just blends so beautifully. I'm obsessed. I really originally wanted the Charlotte Tilbury powder bronzer, but it's just sold out all the time. I got this. I am not let down. It is fabulous. Now, if you want a drugstore alternative, that has kind of a similar blend and it's just an OG classic. This is the Physician's Formula Butter Bronzer. I actually have a new one. I forgot I didn't run out of this, so I have a second one now. It does smell lovely. The only thing I don't like is this comes with like a little brush underneath that just like you lose it or it's a sponge or something. It does have a little mirror, but I just prefer when I'm doing my makeup to have the mirror, you know, so I can just see it as I'm blending it. I don't wanna have to like lift it up and then like go back, it's annoying, you know? And it's just so bulky, it's bulky. So if you're on a trip or something, look how bulky this is in comparison to the Dolce & Gabbana. That's the one thing about this. It does blend beautifully, it blends like a dream. It's very affordable. I think it's $15 US or something. You can always get it on sale. There's always deals, you know, Ulta, all these drugstores. So it is a great bronzer, really, really good. And I have used it today on top of the Rare Beauty Effortless Bronzing Stick. I just kind of gave it a little 
zhuzh after I contoured. So yeah, this is a really gorgeous bronzer. Okay, let's talk some face powders. I don't really like to powder the face with a powder foundation on top of a foundation. I just find personally for me, it's a little bit heavy. I have two products here. This is the YSL All Hours Setting Powder. Honestly, I'm a huge fan of this. It's obviously, it's running out as you can see. This is my, I think, second one. So I'm gonna be up for a third one of this. Has a little sponge underneath that I never use. Use it once or twice. And it's just really, really great. Love to use this to blend into my crease when I'm just doing a really simple makeup look. It's just a really quick, beautiful, complimentary color. This is the shade, oh my God, it's rubbed off. It doesn't say, I'm so sorry, but it's one of the tan shades. And the thing is about this, I used to use it when I would want to kind of blend my foundation on the neck, but I didn't want to have like foundation on my neck because it's hot, right? So I would just take some of this, blend it on the neck, kind of make it more natural. It's a little too dark at the moment to do that, but it doubles as a bronzer. This blends like an exquisite bronzer and it is fabulous. So I usually honestly end up using this lately as a bronzer and in the crease. It is so stunning. Absolutely love. Compact is super chic, although it does scratch easily. Okay, next, I have repurchased. After a really long time, I kind of forgot about this powder. This is the Chanel Le Beige Healthy Glow Sheer Powder. This is such a beautiful product, and what prompted me to repurchase it, honestly, is the smell. I love the smell of this. Some people don't like fragrance with Chanel Beauty. They say it's too much. This is honestly subtle. This comes with a really cute little brush. I actually found this useful on the weekend when I brought it out with me and just wanted to do touch-ups and kind of like blot the face and take away some oils like napkin first and then go in with a little powder, fix concealer, set it. Really, really great little brush. I usually hate the brushes that any sort of powders and blushes from luxury beauty brands come with, but in this case, I don't mind it. I really love this powder. Today, for example, I did do foundation on the neck just to kind of bring it all down together. And then I set it with the Prismi Libra, but sometimes as well, I will set it with this powder because it is tinted as well. So that's just what I like to do. And I like this as touch up powder and like a neck powder <laughs> just to make my makeup blend more. There definitely are probably more affordable powders out there. I just honestly love the compact. I love how it looks. I'm a little bit bougie with the beauty and I just love the scent of it. It's all about the experience for me and the little brush it comes with. I don't like to put powder on with a sponge. It's weird. So yeah, that's why I love it. Hey, now that we have our bronzer on, we are going to be discussing blush. It was kind of hard to narrow down the blush considering I only have like three or four blushes to my name right now. I got rid of so many blushes honestly it's crazy when i left canada and this is the dior backstage rosy glow blush and this thing is so interesting about this this honestly it's quite coral in person on the camera it might look a little pale i know that everyone's obsessed with the pink one because it's like kylie jenner's blush honestly that shade will not look good on my skin tone too cool toned this is so beautiful for just a daily wear i'm not wearing it today i'm actually wearing the chanel one i got in the last uh makeup tutorial i did but this blush is so gorgeous and considering it's so small i haven't even made a dent in it and i use this literally three times a week at least you get 4.6 grams of product and it was about i'd say like 45 dollars us i just really love this i think it's really cute i like the little mirror with it and the color is beautiful and it looks very different and beautiful on other skin tones. I was with my Persian friend this weekend and I was like, oh my God, what blush are you wearing? Like it just was so vibrant and beautiful on her. And it was this exact blush. And I was like, how do I make it look like that? Her skin is a little deeper. It just really like popped, really gorgeous. So honestly, beautiful. It looks great on all skin tones. Looks especially good if you're a little bit more tan than I am. Okay, now that our blush is on, let's discuss highlights. So I think honestly, powder highlights are kind of a dime a dozen. I think that, you know, you can spend the money on the luxury beauty and you can spring for like the dior highlight there is a new hermes highlight which is gorgeous i'm gonna post a review on it i filmed it a little while back so my nails and hair are different but i might still post it anyways i think you can spring for the luxury highlights but there are just some highlights that are just above the rest that just give you such a glow I'm choosing the Charlotte Tilbury Hollywood Flawless Filter. You might not be surprised. This is all worn off because I've used it so much. I have two of these. I have the shade three and four. This is the shade four because when I am more tan, I just like it. I find three is a little kind of like too silvery on me. So I have it on today. You can maybe see, and I just do a little bit on the top of the lips as well. You can as well combine this with foundation and just kind of put it all over. I have had a lady at Sephora who first introduced me to this. I went in, I was like, oh my gosh, I need some makeup on. I'm going to go out for dinner. I'm coming from the gym. I've showered, but I have no makeup bag. Do my makeup. Help me, please. So she did my makeup, and she put this all over my face. I was glowing to the gods, to say the least, but it was a little much. But I still ended up buying it. I loved it. And I just think this is beautiful. It has a doe foot applicator. 
And to be honest with you, I think I've only repurchased this once because you just get so much product. Like I don't even know how much is in here, but it's a lot. Like it's at least a standard size bottle of foundation. And if you think about how much foundation you use versus how much highlight you use, it's very, very different. You're just using a kiss on the cheekbones and key areas, whereas foundation you're using pumps, right? So this lasts literally forever. It is so worth the money. Hey, now that our highlight is on, let's go to the eyes. I have two little palettes here and I have decluttered so much makeup. It was disgusting how many eyeshadow palettes I used to have. I miss some of them sometimes, but then I think, oh, they're just going to take up space in my bathroom and I'm going to use them once in a blue moon. I'm really into small palettes lately because they just take up less room and I actually buy the colors that I know I'm going to use instead of having a big palette with like three or four shades I'm going to use. You know what I mean? So this here is the Huda Beauty Toffee Brown Palette. I think you can still get it. This is honestly fabulous. I have it on the eyes today. I know like the smoky mustard look was so trendy a year ago and I'm just like bringing it back right now, okay? We are bringing it back. So I have this shade blended here. It has an all over lid shade, which I love. Put this all over the crease, put that all over the crease and then put a little bit of this. And then on the lids, I have something else. So this is fabulous. I find the quality of these shadows are very good for the price point. I think this palette was maybe about like $35 Canadian and this is a really great price for a palette. Some of her bigger palettes are all the way up to 85 Canadian Sorry, I always switch between US and Canadian Ugh. 70 US you get just so yeah, really different, but I just love the different color combinations and color stories you can get. And it's just a compact little travel sized eyeshadow palette. There is nothing worse than going on a holiday or going on a trip and you pack an eyeshadow palette and it breaks in your suitcase and all of your things are ruined. It happened once to me with the Urban Decay Naked 2 palette. There was a sumptuous matte black shade and it broke all over my bikinis for my holiday. I think I was like 24 and it was like emergency time like it was not good so now that's part of also why i like to buy mini ones because if i go away or anything in the summertime i have options but they're not taking up the suitcase and they're probably not going to break next this one is a little bit broken because i physically dropped it on the stone floors this is the natasha denona mini sunset palette i just think this is so gorgeous and i have this color on the lids today as the metallic i just think it is so beautiful it really makes your eyes pop and if you are combining the shades together they really make blue eyes pop you know green eyes pop i think it's just fabulous gorgeous for any eye color really and you know i just think the quality considering this is maybe like i think 25 us or something um it's really good the quality is really good i have yet to buy a full size one of her palettes because i find sometimes they're just too artsy fartsy and like i just like you know keep it simple give me like three or four shades to make a look i'm not gonna do crazy greens blues it's just gonna sit there it's a waste of pigmentation it's a waste of product so i really love these i love the quality of these so much i think this is my third one i have bought and I still haven't hit pan on anything because I'm really not doing as much eyeshadow these days, but today we did a little glam. Okay, so now that the eyeshadow is on, let's discuss mascara. So I have a few to share with you. So ignore the fact this is waterproof, okay? The waterproof sucks for the iconic overcurl. It absolutely sucks. It's a nightmare to take off. It clumps your lashes together, but this is the Dior Show iconic overcurl. Ignore the blue, okay? Think of this as the original because the original I've run out of and I've since replaced the hourglass, but I've decided that the hourglass caution extreme mascara, it's a fantastic mascara, but the overcurl, I don't know. It just gives you more of that curled effect. It's fabulous. So this is a great mascara, non-waterproof, really lovely. I'll show you the brush because the brush is the same, waterproof or not. It's like this. It has a curl. It's very satisfying to like work into the lashes. It's really nice, really nice. And one thing about this mascara that I noticed as it was drying out, it started just becoming my favorite bottom lash mascara because the brush could kind of like coat the bottom lashes very easily without making a mess. So that's something about this mascara. It lasted me a long time because even as it was drying, the brush is good for using on the lower lashes. So I was still getting the use out of it, even if it was too dry for the top. I don't like to do too much mascara on my lower lashes. I don't want them to be like spidery and clumpy. So I literally just like barely touch them with like a kiss. Next two mascaras. These are L'Oreal Paris Lash Paradise mascaras. So this is totally a dupe for the Too Faced Better Than Sex. However, the one thing they've actually perfected is, like the brush is pretty much exactly the same. The one thing they've perfected is it doesn't clump. It doesn't flake. It isn't a nightmare. The Better Than Sex absolutely is a nightmare on your lashes. It, it leaves little clumps and then it leaves flakes on your face. It's a hot mess. And so L'Oreal has basically perfected this, duped it, and it's half the price at least or less. Another thing, the Waterproof Lash Paradise. I was looking for a good waterproof mascara. 
and I absolutely love this. It's the same brush, so you get really nice volume and length, and it's just beautiful. It lasts fabulously, and what I like to do lately is I like to do waterproof mascara on the bottom lashes because if my eyes water anything throughout the day, I don't have to worry about it becoming a mess. The only thing is the brush is a little bit thick for under the eyes, so you have to be careful not to make a mess, but so far, so good. So yeah, really fabulous drugstore finds. I absolutely love these mascaras so, so much. I'm sure you guys have tried them as well. If you haven't, you need to get on it and they're always usually on sale. Like I think I bought those both for like $11 online. So fabulous. Okay, now that the eyes are done, the brows. We need to talk about the brows. So honestly, brow products, a little bit boring. I've been using the NYX Micro Brow Pencil for years. It's a dupe for the Anastasia Beverly Hills Brow Wiz, but I have been using the Brow Wiz lately because I just don't really know where to buy NYX here and it's just there and Sephora, it's just easier, right? So I love though, I absolutely love. I think brow pencils, precision brow pencils, are kind of a dime a dozen. It's easy to find an affordable one now. I don't need to sit here and talk to you about them for an hour. But what I really, really love that I keep repurchasing, this is probably my fifth one, is the Anastasia Beverly Hills I don't even know what it's called. Hip brow gel, I think. So this is the brush. It's just a very fine tapered, very, very like easy breezy. I literally love to use this on days when I don't want to pencil in my brows and just like give a quick coat of color, really natural, easy breezy, fabulous. I do also coat this over top like I have done today. I did the Anastasia Beverly Hills Taupe Brow Wiz and then a coat over top just to kind of, you know, fill in any areas that might be missing. Although I have a little like patch here, but ugh whatever. Um, but yeah, I just like to kind of go over this just to give a little extra definition and hold as well as kind of coloring because sometimes when you do your foundation, right, the pigmentation kind of gets on the ends of the brow hairs and this just takes it all away. A brow pencil will not do that. Okay, now that the rest of our face is done, we haven't done the lips. Let's do the lips. So I have four products to share with you all in different categories. So first is lipstick. So Definitely the last year, at least, this has been my favorite, favorite, favorite stick lipstick. This is by Gucci Beauty. This is called Blaze of Noon. It's sold out in a lot of stores, but if you find it, definitely get it. I've seen it at Saks Fifth Avenue. I actually bought this for the first time in Saks Fifth Avenue in New York City. I was on holiday with my dad for Christmas, and I've since repurchased it somewhere here, I think, in Dubai Mall. So this is the color. It is an absolutely beautiful nude. I'll put some of it on my hand. I'll get the hands dirty for you guys today. So this is absolutely stunning, stunning. Like, look at that. Every time I wear this, I get compliments from my friends. They always ask me what lip shade am I wearing? It is absolutely fabulous. It's not really like peachy. It's not brownie. It's just like kind of a warm nude. It's fabulous. It is so gorgeous. I absolutely love the color. I've worn it in so many videos. And you know what, considering it's Gucci Beauty, I mean, look at the packaging there. If you are a packaging hoe, you are gonna love this lipstick. Beside the fact that it's actually beautiful, it lasts a long time. For a satin lipstick, this lasts very long. If I wear this out at night for dinner, I only reapply it once. I have literally gone wearing this all day long and haven't reapplied it. It does fade a little bit, but it doesn't look like a hot mess. You can easily get away with wearing this all day and applying it once and then going out for dinner and applying it once. It's not a lipstick where it's gonna just slip off and every time you drink water, it's coming off. No, this is a fabulous, fabulous formula. I think it is about $50 or so US, maybe 45, which isn't as bad as Tom Ford, I know, or Hermes. Those lipsticks are way too much money. This is a fabulous product. So another item, that I wanted to share that I am wearing today. And I mentioned it in a vlog that is upcoming. This is the YSL Tatouage Couture Matte Stain number no. seven. I have two shades of this, but this is my absolute favorite. It's kind of like a pale nude shade. I love it so much. It's just a beautiful color. You can see I like kind of like warm nudes. It's really fabulous. This is it here. And it just honestly lasts so long. Like this will last you all day long and you really don't need to reapply it. It feels weightless. You can barely tell it's on your lips like I'm wearing it now. And the thing is, I love the applicator because sometimes when you are doing liquid lips and a doe foot is too round, it can be a challenge. You wanna really get the, what are these called? You wanna get the top of the lips defined properly. I used to have this as a ride or die, okay? I was thinking about featuring this, but I'm onto YSL now, okay? Too Faced and I are, we're having a mixed relationship. So this is the Too Faced Melted Matte in Sellout. I absolutely loved this for years and I still love it. 
but I find sometimes the applicator, because it is just a classic kind of lip gloss doe foot, it is hard sometimes to get your lipstick absolutely precise unless you use a lip liner, but I will show you as well the shade. This is just gorgeous. You can see the theme again. It is definitely a deeper shade though, for sure. And I was finding sometimes it was like maybe a little too deep on me. I was really more into this kind of like warm nude. So this is a shade sellout. Again, this though is super drying, but it will not budge. This will outlast for like 12 hours. It's a fantastic formula. So anytime I am going out and I know I'm going to be eating a lot, drinking, you know, several martinis, whatever, I do still like to wear this. I think it's budge proof, but for comfort overall and not having super dry lips after, I really am loving this Saint Laurent Tatouage Couture Liquid Lip. So now that we've covered that, we need to cover lip balm, tinted lip balm. So I just really wanted an easy breezy kind of lip balm that wasn't a lipstick, but still had a tint to it because I know that luxury beauty companies are all over selling us these like very expensive tinted lipsticks. I've just hauled one in my last beauty video and it was like a Dior uh, kind of lip shine. It's pretty, but is it worth the $40? No, but this absolutely is worth every penny. This is my By Terry and this is the Hyaluronic Hydra Balm in the shade number two, Nudissimo. Every time I wear this, I get compliments. My friends are literally like, where is that from? I love this. So this is what it looks like. It's a little bit more on the pinky side, but it is absolutely a stunning, stunning, stunning color. I've worn it in several videos as well. It is absolutely beautiful, a beautiful pink. You can see my color palette. I'm really into the warm nude. So this is it here, absolutely gorgeous. I'm really obsessed. And you know what? Considering this was a little bit high price, I still have a lot of it left for the amount of times I've honestly worn this. Cost per wear on this, it's really not that bad. Very slim, compact packaging, easy to throw in a small bag as well, which is really nice. And just a stunning color. Wait, which one is it? <laughs> this one. Just a stunning color, really, really beautiful. It actually has coverage, but it doesn't have the thick feeling of a lipstick. So that's what I love about it. It's just quick, it's easy breezy. As it fades a little bit, you can just reapply it and it's not just gonna be like a sheer balm that's like 50 bucks. This I think was around $50 US, but it is so good and it's moisturizing. It doesn't make your lips feel dry after. I love it so much. Okay, and last item is a lip gloss. Lip gloss is essential. I'm always wearing lip gloss in my videos. I do feel though like lip glosses are kind of a dime a dozen and you can easily find a cute nude lip gloss from so many different brands. You don't necessarily need to spend all the money at Sephora. There's great drugstore options as well. I'm recently liking one from Tower 28, the Korean skincare makeup brand. It's just like a nude gloss. I really like it, although it tastes like plasticky. That's the only thing. But I just wanted to share one that's like a classic. It's been repurchased. I love it. This is the NARS Laguna lip gloss. You can see there's like, I put it over red, so it might come up as a little bit red, but you now all the red is coming off. Oh my goodness. Yeah, 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 yeah. Swatch isn't really in the cards today because look how red it's looking, but this is kind of what it looks like. It's just like a, ignore the red bits if you can. It's just a gorgeous summertime bronze lip topper. I just love this. It doesn't really plump the lips, but it just feels like it's not too thin, but it's not too thick. Like you feel like you're wearing a gloss, but it's not too much. I just really, really love this. I think I wanna buy more NARS glosses. I just think they have beautiful colors available and the colors of their blushes too are fabulous. I personally just love this. I don't really wear it on its own because I like a more pale gloss if I am just doing a plain gloss, but topped on top of a nude that needs to be made a little bit more, you know, deep or a red lip to make it nice and juicy, like a juicy apple, fabulous. So might've been a little bit of a long video, but that is for my beauty favorites. I really hope you enjoyed. I hope that you found this helpful. If you are considering, you know, some more luxury beauty products, or if you just wanted to see kind of what was out there, these are items, a lot of them I've been using for well over a year and absolutely stand by and absolutely love. I'm gonna link them all below for you. I do use affiliate links, they do support my channel. So if you are up for it, definitely check those out and check out the products. Thank you guys so much for watching. If you are new here, definitely consider subscribing so we can see each other again. And if you are a returning subscriber, thank you, I love you, and we'll see each other soon. All right guys, bye.